the letter. Oh, it was actually pretty, probably a 1500 word essay. <laughs> you know, it was long. But again, it wasn't towards a culture of respect. I picked up the phone. He said, I'm sorry at the end. Facing, it's fearful to do this kind of stuff. It takes courage. It takes bravery. It takes communication. And it takes setting up boundaries. Saying, I, I'll just use yours for example. I noticed that you like coming and, and being straight in my face, four inches from my face when, when you speak to me. I'd appreciate that you give me a three foot space. That's hard to say. But practice the words. I'll take you back to what we said about what is the good and the bad of before, during, and after making cupcakes. Many of you said preparation. You need to think about things. If we make the time to think about what we want to see, we're going to be able to help move things along. We're not going to change everybody. I've seen a lot of people on this campus that I'll be truthful. I've given up a little bit on them. But what I do do is I have control how much it affects me. And that's where we can really work together to empower ourselves and work through. I help people positive reframe all the time. This is some, some of my gifts and where I've studied. It's tough, but it takes practice. And sometimes people are like, I had Molly on my shoulder, but eventually Molly goes away and it's just them. You need that sounding board. You need that core. You see who's here today. They all want the same thing. Heck, you just have a room full of people wanting the same thing. A call to respect. Build together on that. Build that strength on that. So, you mentioned awareness. You mentioned mindfulness. That all starts with us. That awareness piece and the mindfulness piece, that's talking us. We're not going to do it here today, but your homework, your play work, there you go, is, is to look in the mirror and measure yourself up first to some of those rules and behaviors. Because there was a time that I didn't model all those. When I start shifting and changing my own, I attracted less of that to me. It's hard work. It's hard work. You know, it is. So as we look at how we empower ourselves, you know, because in your group, what are all the possibilities? I'm not going to say, I don't want you to say, wow, I don't have the confidence right now to do that. I want you to brainstorm all the possible ways that you might help shift the following people. You all know someone who might be a coworker that is a tough cookie to shift, who might not be modeling the way of if what you think is respectful. Customers, students, employees. You know we're one another's customers. Supervisors. There could be expectations that are talked about there. It's tough work, yes. But I want you to come up with all the possibilities that you could shift them from toxic to non-toxic. What are some of those things? You may have tried them before. Put them down. What are all the strategies that you could use to how to shift them? Do you understand what I'm, I'm asking? It's tough. But brainstorm a few ideas. This is the preparation part. We're going to the grocery store. We're looking on the shelf. Am I going to go for this, or if I'm going to go work hard and try to find some of this? What are some strategies? And I do. I have that hint down there. It doesn't have to be a big thing. Don't think you need to do this grandiose project and launch it. It can be small, too.
All right, 30 more seconds, and we'll share some ideas. Eight, five, four, three, two, one. All right, did you guys come up with some great ideas? Yes, we did, right? All right, what are some of those ideas that you have? Bring it out. Again, we are not convergent thinking, we're divergent thinking, meaning we're looking at all possibilities here. We're not saying, well, no, that would never work. No, toxic. We're going to assess it. All right, what are some things? Yes. And that is a golden nugget, especially because I think you, you said about those who are looking inward more so than looking outward to help others. You know, they're, they're, they love those pat on the backs publicly. <laughs> Beautiful. What else? Being overly nice. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I, I'm, being overly nice is good after assessing the person. If you look at me, you probably would think I'm a nice person. Good job, yes, I am. <laughs> but to some people, I'm way too sweet. What's her intent? You know, why is she so happy all the time? She probably beats her dog. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, so you need to have, I don't know where I'm coming up with these things, but you know, you need to have that awareness though, too, as to who you're communicating with. But I get, gotcha. Go forward with the intent of niceness. What else? Yes. You kind of have to understand the toxic behavior, not encourage it by any means, but like understand. Like people like when you understand where they're coming from or like why they ask a certain way. 
You're wise beyond your years. So how might you, what question could you ask, and anybody can add on to this, what question could you ask to kind of get at that? So we're not assuming? What do you think? How do you ask a question? Yeah, it makes total sense. Because I could say, I could say, Joe, I noticed that you just crossed your arms and, and started staring, no, not staring off, but like look in the other direction. You know, is there something you're thinking about? Uh, you know, it, it's those kind of inquiries by behaviors. Yeah, you, because a lot of times they're like, oh, yeah, I better have awareness that I just did that. Because again, nine times out of 10, they probably don't realize they did it either. Excellent. Yes? Hand came up as a good uh, thing, too, that she said, when you put your hand up for yourself, you have to be consistent. Because the people that they will be wearing you down, the kids. <laughs> Do you make the analogy. My children, yeah. <laughs> so I thought that was good. Consistency of behaviors. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wouldn't it be great? Because if I listen to you, complain, and I know you're not complaining to me, but say you are for 15 minutes, and I'm like, oh, I hear you. And then next time you come, it's like, I don't need to hear that. You know, take it somewhere else. Now you're inconsistent. You know, it, it, you know, I often say, I am all open to helping you. Are you looking for a solution? And they're like, and sometimes they say no. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where you need to find your courage and strength is, by nature, I'm a problem solver. I'm a helper. That's just who I am. I can't deliver that for you. Wow, that takes so much strength to find those words. But by darn, you better make sure you have three eggs to make, well, I know this takes three eggs. You, so I don't know how many eggs yours takes. But you need to make sure you have all your ingredients before you go to make it. And that includes confidence. It does, in addition to your words. Because you can say, I don't like to have conversations like this. And then they're like, oh, yeah, like this. And they just grab on, and they just suck the energy out of you, right? So it's those words and also behaviors. What else? One more? Gives you something to go for it. My thought was you have to be aware of where the students come from. Meaning, the students that come to the registrar's office at the 14,000 some students in the university, they're the problematic ones. So you already know you're coming from the problem. Uh -huh. You can't say, I've had a rough day and spend it on them. Yeah. You have to be aware of where you are and why are you. And that's where your empathy rule comes into. I often, because I worked in financial aid, I often said, I noticed that, that you're feeling frustrated right now. Let's see what we can do. Oh, wow, I just validated what they're feeling right now. OK, one barrier down. Next. And again, what's in your control? There are things in our control, folks. It's just remembering that they are. Remembering. Because as we close today, Again, playbook, that's what you have. You have a playbook now. I want you to, when you go back to your office, really reflect and say, what are the things that I'm gonna change? Because what do we say? That's the only thing that's really consistent, right? You said consistency, how are you gonna model it? When this happens, then I will, X, F fill it in. Consistent, so think about that because I say immediately, next month, six months, one year. Why on earth would Molly be planning that out? It's not because I'm OCD either. Why else? Like, I'm like, oh, check, check, check. Why, why do I say that? Thank you. Because you're right. There's certain things that are like, you know what, I can do that right now. And then you build some more courage. It's like, I'm going to take that on. Don't go after the biggest bully on campus, folks. 
Or if you do, talk to me first. <laughs> you know, because, uh, yeah, you know where I'm going with that. Um, but really, it's visualizing what you'd like to see. If you know you have a meeting with so-and-so, and you know that, historically speaking, it has gone this way, toxic. Write what you would like to see happen in that meeting. Write it down with intent. Because by darn, if you go and say, I'm going to get the same thing because I got the same thing last 10 times, try it. Try it. Just take that trust. Take that leap of faith and try it. And track your successes, not your failures. Because that's where you're going to continue to not only build your story, but share your story so others can also build the courage through your behaviors. So what support do you need? If we would brainstorm a whole bunch of things, I'm not saying what you specifically need, what are some things that we could do and you could do to, for support as you go through this journey? What's that? Talk to friends. Talk to friends. And maybe assess who those friends are and who you go to for what and why. If you need your taxes done, you're not going your plumber, folks. <laughs> At least I recommend not. <laughs> but so think about that. <laughs> think about that. So it's not like how, you know, friends, colleagues, coworkers. You know, if you want to follow up with me, it's like, who was the lady wearing red with a blue scarf or whatever? You know that talked about so-and-so, ask me. I'll put you in touch with them. Because that's how you continue to build the momentum and energy. What else? What are some other other things that you could support? Since you work with so many different personalities, you, why would you, like you assess who you would go to and why? Or what do you mean by that? So you're going to assess those relationships, how you can possibly adapt your style. Yeah, this one person thought that I was manipulative, aggressive, and um, what, what was the other word? And this was like when I would only, this is what you see is what you get, you know, when I don't adapt. It was a little threatening, so to speak. Um, we now have great conversations. And it wasn't because of this individual. I'll tell you that. It wasn't. This individual is still um, consistent in his own behaviors. But I changed mine, and I feel darn good about where I am. Well, I have one, and I, uh, we get along great, but I've heard stories yeah. by other people. So, yeah. it's, just so it's the art of adap adapting. It's really the art of adapting. <coughs> Wonderful. So what do I need to keep front of mind when, when I'm being faced with a toxic situation? What do I need to keep in mind? This is where your mantras come in. You're tricking your brain here. Don't accept it. You have to stand your ground and turn, but you have to turn. And it's not easy. It's not no. Easy. And for all you young folks, my best game is there. Get older. <gasps> See, there you go. See, aren't you glad you came to this session? <laughs> But, but you did an example. It's give hope where you feel it's despair. It's like it's worthless, you know? And I do encourage, though, too, that your health, your self-care is number one. If you find that you can't, no matter how much, you've exhausted the list. You've called me time and time and time again. Well, now I'm helping you write your resume and cover letter. I'm getting you a good job. <laughs> Because that's my job. My job is to make sure you're enjoying your experience here, even if that means that I am going to help you go elsewhere. That's a part of what we do. You know, we want you to love what you do, or at least be able to manage when it's not so bright outside. <laughs> yeah, it's a little cloudy today. So what do you have to do after standing up for this cause, and this is the last question. Oh my, I was being rude and not respectful. Look at the time. We're gonna get and you know what? I need a note before I go back. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> I'll email her. <laughs> I'll email her. Um, and that is true. Please, you know, if you do need something like that, I will be behind you 100%. Um, so what do you have, what do you do after standing up for the calls? What do you do? Give yourself credit for standing up for the cause. That's exactly right. Because you need to enjoy that success. And remember what it felt like when you were successful. So that you can have another win. Because when you win, I want you to share that story with others. Because that's where it catches on. Everyone? Yes, Molly. Yay! <laughs> Thank you so very much for coming. And please use the Office of Social Equity. Alina rocks. She is a new addition to this team, and she is so approachable, so fabulous, and comes with great experience. And then also, of course, our office. We're here confidentially, too. I want to put that front of mind because we're here to help you. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you. And thank you, Tatiana.